How are you today? Aw. Thanks, honey. How are you today, Lindsay? Got a little something different tonight. We're going to play some games. Yeah, we're going to play some Boggle tonight. Yeah, waiting on the storms. I guess we're going to get some really bad ones. They're on their way. They're at uh, rolling point right now. It's just this huge swath. Man, it's windy as heck outside, too. Playing Boggle and pulling some cards. I tried to do the horizontal thing, but it wouldn't let me. So here we are. Here we are. That's okay, though. I shall shuffle us some cards. Hey, Jay, how are you? How's it going? Welcome to the world of strange under the full moon lunar eclipse, followed by a solar eclipse, followed by some comments, followed by some hefty planetary alignment. It's so weird. Yeah, it's hitting me hard too, Jay. Hey, everybody. Hey, Shadow. Yeah, a lot going on. I hope everyone's buckled up, Buttercups. At least we have each other, man, and we know we're not alone as we go through this. Remember, one of the things that keeps me tethered is this is a necessary deconstruction. It's a necessary thing. These are necessary realizations. But yeah, boy, it's been a rough couple of weeks for little damselflies. So we were going to go outside tonight and enjoy the fire and the lunar eclipse, but no, we're going to have tornadoes instead and 50 mile an hour. Yeah, evolution before evolution. True that. Um, we have mighty winds and tornadoes heading this way. Suffice it to say, we are not outside. <laughs> but I brought the stars in, so. Everybody grab some paper, grab some pens. We're going to play some Boggle. We're going to get our little minds into a engaged and redirected for a moment before we do some cards. Ooh, and remember a couple of weeks ago we pulled some authors. Well, I've got some quotes and I added three more. Uh, I randomly chose three more authors so uh time permitting tornadoes permitting we'll get into that too we'll just give it a couple more minutes wait for aria
Maybe we'll see our sweet ghost wolf tonight. So I'll just go ahead and do some shuffles. There she is. We're doing good. We were going to be outside, but Mother Nature had other plans. We got 50 mile an hour wind gusts and tornado watches. So, and it's coming straight for us. I think it's going to be here around nine. But man, is it windy out there. I'm glad I went outside a minute ago because all my stuff was all over the place. <laughs> my little watering can. My little shades I built for the babies. How are you feeling, Aria? Yeah. It is scary. How are these energies? How are you doing? Grab a pen and some paper, Aria. We're going to play some Bible. If you don't know how, no worries. It's super easy. I shall show you. This is a little dis distract. Yeah, headache. That's an ascension sign for sure. Clearing out the cobwebs. Got a lot going on. Also, I'm sure there's stress involved. We can do it. All right. Y'all let me know when you have papers and pens handy. Or whatever you use to write. Papers, pens, gadgets, phones, computers, whatever. You're going to be writing word lists. Me, I'm just vacillating between feather and quill and parchment. That's right vacillating between rage and despair but albeit hopeful i know it's necessary deconstruction for like transmology there involution for evolution so it's worth it it's just rough things are tough here in the old u.s getting scarier and scarier every day All right, cool. Does okay first. Um, does everybody know about Boggle? Do you need? I shall give you a quick lesson. Oh, how fun! Hooray! Okay, so. We have this handy dandy timer right here and I'll put it, I'll put it right there so everybody can see it. Now how this game goes is you want words, three letters or more. So for example, we have, and all they need to touch. So we have diet, we have sit, we have cob, Let's see, this looks like it's an I-N, yeah, I-N. Oh, we have mine, minor. Bait, baited. Ooh, we almost have mouse, but the D blocks it. So do y'all kind of get the gist? We'll do a practice run. Is everybody ready? <coughs> Tee hee hee. <laughs> oh, let me know. I'll do a shaky shake, put it on mute so y'all's eardrums don't blast out.
All right. Is everybody ready? All right. Let me. Oh, that's fantastic. Great minds. Great minds. Okay. Let me, I'm going to mute it while I uh, shake. Can everybody see? We're starting the timer. Ooh, ooh, I need, a, I need my notebook. All right. <clears throat> Ready, set, go. Just write your list and then we'll deal with it. I'll tell you what we do next. Hooray, my favorite game. All right. And we're just watching the timer. Now oh, there's a lot in there. A lot and nothing. Yeah, and it does sometimes seem like, golly, that thing is taking forever. One of these days, we'll send out prizes for the winner. <laughs> That'll be a fun thing to do. Mm. Almost, let's see. Golly, I'm lost. Let's see. Oh. Okay, time's up. So now what we do is I'll start and then y'all follow suit. And what y'all are going to do is list your words in the chat. And any words that repeat, like when I read off my list, if y'all have a word that's the same, scratch it off. It, it's... Uh, Look at my side. But, okay, so I have real, R-E-E-L. Who else has real? R-E-E-L, real. See how doable this game is. And y'all let me know. I need to know if you got it. Uh, toke, T-O-K-E, T-O-K-E. 
Tokes, T O K E S. Oopsies. T O K E S. T O K E. Let me know. Never. N E V. Wait. Uh oh. N E V E R. Ever. E V E R. Sane. S A N E hair H A R E like a bunny poke P O K E up oh, I missed pokes heel H E E L then T H where'd I go T H I feel like maybe okay so that's not a go oopsies that's a oopsies leak l-e-a-k oh and i missed oh leaks i got leaks l-e-a-k-s and toes t-o-e-s toke to oh cool so scratch it off token tokes that's right <laughs> token tokes okay who's next shadow go next what do you have Hair, heel, leak, and toes. All right, scratch them off, Lindsay. Scratch them off. Let's see. You got heel, hair, and heel, and toes. Okay. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm sure. Go ahead and give me your uh, words, and I'll yeah, yeah. Add your words, and it's the first ones of practice because we're unsure of what we're doing. Toe, elm, thug, tag. Good job. Nice. T. <laughs> wow, good job, Shadow. Okay, so we have toe. Perfect. This is great. Elm. Good job. Where you find elm? I don't see an M. E L H. I'm not seeing an elm, honey. Scratch it. I don't see an M. So. <laughs> oh, this might have looked like one. But no, there is no M here. <laughs> Everything with an M, scratch it. Teehee, I do the same thing. Look, my list is sideways. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Thug. T-H-U-G. Yep. You got thug. Anybody else have thug? Rag. R-A-G. Lovely, lovely. Look at us. You got that. Knee and E E. She's teaching us some words. And thug and pot, scratch, thug and pot. Both of y'all scratch them on out. Stoke. That's a good one. Doesn't work though. We got that TH next to it. Scratch it. S. Yeah, it'll play with you. It'll play with you. Okay. 
those. That's a really good one. T H T H Not seeing it, Shadow. T H T H that's an A. Can y'all see this okay? To, let's see. And then Gal. G A L. Good deal. Um, Aria. Okay, let's see. Yep, the letters have to be in order and touching. So, Saki, for example, S-A-K. That's why we're doing a practice one first, so everybody can get their toes wet. So, yeah, they have to be touching. Can't skip. So, they can touch like this, any which way they touch. But you can't jump a cube. Yeah, this one's just practice to get our little toesies wet. Yeah, just to get our toesies wet to get familiar with how we find them and then how we count count our words for points. Okay, let's see. Jay, what do we have then? T-H, there's T-H-E-N. T H A N, lovely. Anybody have then? And then we got. Well, hey, incognito. Happy, happy day, honey. Hurt. Let me look. H. That's a P. H U R P. H U R. No, hurt does not work. We're playing a game, Nico. Tee hee hee. Uh, toes, scratch toes, because I got toes, Lindsay. Then scratch then, because um, I think Shadow and, I mean, Aria and uh, Jay got it. Ooh, these are good. Well done for our first try, y'all. Leg. L-A-G, yep. What else do you have? Gut. Ooh, good one. G-U-T, yep, and G-U-T. Pain. Nice job, Lindsay. P-A-N-E. Wow, look at you go, Rave. R A V E. Tot. T A U T. Dang, Lindsay wins this round. Okay, Era. Ooh, good one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish, Lindsay. This is so exciting. Okay, Paths. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's see, where are we? P A T H S, love it. And nap. This is great. Now, here's an example. We can do nap and pan. And always look for that S, too, to end it. That'll give you more points. Pain, rave, did I look? Yeah, I did. And pug, R-A-V-E, rave, P-U-G, wow, kick ass, all right. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to be in order, just touching. They just have to be touching. Let's see, okay, J. Well, 
Let me see. Hurt. Let me. I'm answering your question. Um, Aria. How does pug work? P U G. See, they're touching right there. P U G. And then your question. Hurt. H U. Well, no, because you'd have to go H U R T. So they need to be touching. Hut works. H U T. Gut. Rag. All right, J, 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 where's your little listy poo? There you are. Okay, scratch toe and toes. Scratch reel. I got a scratch reel too. Put, that's a good one. P U T, era. E-R-A, right out the middle. Be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Tut. Nice. Golly, that's good. Tut. Never. I got never. Scratch never. Did you get ever? Panko. That's really good. P-A-N-C-K-O. Wow. Excellent. 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 Tut. Somebody else got tut. Let's see. Ale. Um... No ale. Oops. Let's see. And top. T O P. Perfect. So you can't rearrange the letters even if they touch. Under the TH is the A for ale. A, right, okay, good question, Aria. No, you can't rearrange the letters. So for example, we're looking for ale, and we would have to bounce over the L to get to the E. So those aren't technically touching. A and L don't touch. Now, T-H-A-N, and see her P-A-N-C-O-T-O-E-S, H-U-T, G-U-T, L-A-G, R-A-G, yeah, under the T-H is the A for ale. Right here, right? This is an I. A oh, like ale is an ailing. A I L. Ooh, look, and we have P A I L too. Are you ale is an ailing or ale is a beer? Because here we have ale, which is a word, and it's ailing to get sick. But A-L-E does not work because the A and the L aren't touching. No, mm -mm. can't be rearranged. Good points, good points, because it feels like it could, but in Boggle it does not. They stay stationary and um, you're, you're pulling off the corners. Yep, they've got to be touching, but no rearranging. So this would work with A-I-L, 
but A-L-E doesn't work. Want to play with us, Nico? How's everybody feeling? You want to try a game? We'll do the score to show you how to do the score. So if everybody's ready to count their things. So letters three and four, le words three and four letters long is one point. Words five letters long is two points. Six letters, three points. Here, I'll write this down. So three and four letters equals one point. Five equals two points. Six equals three points. Seven is four. Eight is five, and then anything over eight is a lot of points. I'm looking at the destructions. That was from memory. Okay, so seven is five and eight or more is 11 whole points. No worries, no worries. This is just a practice for everybody to see. One, for everybody to see if they like it and they wanna do it again. And two, if it's a viable game for us to do live. So this is our first time trying. It's gonna be bumpy. It's gonna get off track. Um, but just something different and engaging for everyone, especially when during a time when, you know, it's a rough couple of weeks. How are you, Nico? How's these energies doing for you? So let me know. What do y'all want to do? You want to do another round or I am totally happy. Any which way, I've got our cards set up. Ooh, another thing. Remember, y'all, a couple of weeks ago, we pulled some cards for uh, the literary. It's International Women's Month, March, which I think is really cool because we... Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I remember when we pulled Virginia Woolf, Joy Harjo, and Jamaica Kincaid. So I pulled some quotes for them. And I have them. And then we also have Toni Morrison, Shirley Jackson. And Gertrude Stein. These three are American writers. She died in 2019. I think she died in the 60s. And, and so did she. No, there's no sorry. No sorry. Right? 13 points. Good deal. Yeah, you rocked that out. Let me count. Let me count. I think I'm pretty sure Winsy wins Winsy Lun. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, where's my little list? Oh, for goodness sakes. There we go. All right, I've got one, two, three, four. I have six whole points. Six whole points. Yeah, my brain's down too. 
So we'll move on, y'all. We'll move on. It's something different. We shall move on. We'll do this for another time. Nico, we were going to go outside and play in the fire with the plant babies under the full moon Libra lunar eclipse, but it's, there's tornado watches right now. Yeah, finding words is fun. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, so I'm going to put choose an author. So I'm going to write down these authors. Your choices are Toni Morrison, um, Shelley, Shirley Jackson. She wrote horror. I think she wrote Frankenstein, maybe. I know she wrote The Haunting on House Hill. Toni Morrison, Jamaica Kincaid. Jamaica Kincaid has some powerful stuff, boy. Um, Joy Harjo, Harjo, she's a Native American from the United States currently writing Virginia Woolf. It's funny, these were all random, y'all, but most of them are from the United States. And, and they're not all from the United States in this pack. Virginia Woolf, Mary Shelley, thanks, Incognita. Incognito, I love that name. And Gertrude Stein. So y'all choose who do you want, which one is resonating with you tonight. We're going to do something a little bit different. Anywho, yeah, so I pulled and they're all from the United States, which is really kind of cool because God Almighty, we're going through it. So I am going to, oh, look, okay, look. So I pulled some short um, quotes. But I also, Toni Morrison, I, I love her. I have loved her storytelling since, oh gosh, 20, 30 years now. And every, I've read almost everything she's written. Her language is so brutally precise. I absolutely love her. So I'm going to cut out some quotes. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, really, Jay? See, that's a beautiful confirmation. Yep, you were there. I remember. Okay. Um, she's so beautifully precise with her language. Um, okay, so I wanted to read y'all something that I came across as I was pulling quotes. This is Toni Morrison. You think because he doesn't love you that you are worthless. You think because he doesn't want you anymore that he is right. That his judgment and opinions of you are correct. If he throws you out in the garbage, then you're garbage. You think he belongs to you because you want him to belong to him. Let's see, wait. You think he belongs to you because you want to belong to him. Don't. It's a bad word, belong. Especially when you put it with somebody you love. Love shouldn't be like that. Did you ever see the way the clouds love a mountain? They circle all around it. Sometimes you can't even see the mountain for the clouds. But you know what? You go up top and what do you see? His head. The clouds never cover the head. His head pokes through because the clouds let him. They don't wrap him up. They let him keep his head up high, free, with nothing to hide him or bind him. You cannot own a human being. You can't lose what you don't own. Suppose you did own him. 
Could you really love somebody who was absolutely nobody without you? You really want someone like that? Somebody who falls apart when you walk out the door? You want, um, you don't, do you? And neither does he. You're turning your whole life over to him. Your whole life, girl. And if it means so little to you that you can just give it away, hand it to him, then why should it mean any more to him? He can't value you more than you value yourself. She rocks, man. Cool, Toni Morrison. I love her. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, geez, so I'm cutting out quotes, y'all. <clears throat> I don't have my shit together these last couple of weeks. I'm not even going to pretend like I do, y'all. <laughs> the deconstruction is real. I I'm just rolling with it. Well, here's another one from her. If y'all haven't read Toni Morrison, give yourself a treat. But also beware, she's going to bring some stuff up, man. Okay, this is a really good one. I'll read it later. Okay, so we have our Toni Morrison quotes. Oh, she is an Aquarius? I did not know. Camping out with your, oh, that's so sweet, with your feral cat. See, I wish we were outside, y'all, but at least we're together, and that's what matters under this full moon. Okay, so we have Toni Morrison over here. I'm going to put these quotes on top, and just see randomly support from the universe in a way, in a way where all these women, right, they've been through it. They lived through the time when, gosh, some of them, they couldn't even have bank accounts. They couldn't, didn't even have pockets in their clothes because women weren't allowed to have change. We seem to be beating those primitive drums once again. So who better to consult than the women who came before us? And also, I know some of you are writers. This might help inspire, provide company and support. Still waiting, first fall spring. Man, that's disappointing, those fall springs. We have a plum tree, Mr. Plum, I made a video with him. I'll post it in the next following days but finally finally mr plum has flowers last year he got flowers but uh then we got a freeze it was a fall spring yep no one they want to put us back to that see this is what my little spirals have been is you've got to be kidding am i gonna have to have some kind of underground railroad to save and protect women from these maniacs? Am I brave enough to speak the truth about what I think about these maniacs? It is a grave, grave danger. Okay. <clears throat> Here, Toni Morrison says this, the function, the very serious function of racism is distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. And here's this, this right here is really powerful to me. Because you see it in, in, in um, women's issues, you see it in the transgender, you see it, it's ubiquitous, these drums that they're beating that are distractions from, from what's really going on. So the function, the very serious function of racism is distraction. It keeps you from doing your work. It keeps you explaining over and over again your reason for being. Somebody says you have no language, so you spend 20 years proving that you do. Somebody says your head isn't shaped properly, so you have scientists working on the fact that it is. 
Somebody says you have no art, so you dredge that up. Somebody says you have no kingdom, so you dredge that up. And none of this is necessary because there will always be one more thing. Sing it, sister. Here's another quote that I love. <clears throat> it comes from the bluest eye. The bluest, the, her work is so powerful. Um... But these are my thoughts, too, you know, in these last... And I feel like as you've been, we're all feeling it. We're all going through it. So, here's another one of hers, and I'll get back in. All of our waste, which we dumped on her, and which she absorbed, and all of our beauty, which was hers first, and which she gave to us, all of us, all who knew her, felt so wholesome after we cleaned ourselves on her. We were so beautiful when we stood astride her ugliness. Her simplicity decorated us. Her guilt sanctified us. Her pain made us glow with health. Her awkwardness made us think we had a sense of humor. Her inarticulateness made us believe that we were eloquent. Her poverty kept us generous. Even her waking dreams we used to silence our own nightmares. <clears throat> and she led us, and thereby deserved our contempt. We honed our egos on her, patted our character with her fra frailty, and yawned in the fantasy of our strength. And fantasy it was, for we were not strong, we were only aggressive. We were not free, merely licensed. We were not compassionate. We were polite, not good, but well behaved. We courted death in order to call ourselves brave and we hid like thieves from life. We substituted good grammar for intellect. We switched habits to simulate maturity. We rearranged lies and called it the truth seeing in the new pattern of an old idea, the revelation and the word. Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye. For reals, if y'all haven't read her stuff, read it and read it now. Read it now with all the things we have going on. These are what we're, you know, it's all over the world too. But especially in the United States. Yeah, she's so good. There's another one of these that... And I'm going to do this with all the writers, y'all. They just are so exciting, scintillating, provocative. In all the right ways. Mm, here's a good one. There is a loneliness that can be rocked. Arms crossed. Yeah, it, she's so, she nails it, y'all. There's a, a quote in here that I wrote down that just, man, I read it like a thousand times and every time it just hit me in my gut. So, so the, her wording is so precise. So there is a loneliness that can be rocked. Arms crossed. Knees drawn up, holding, holding on. This motion, unlike a ship's, smooths and contains the rocker. It's an inside kind, wrapped tight like skin. And then there is the loneliness that roams. No rocking can hold it down. It is alive on its own. A dry and spreading thing that makes the sound of one's own feet going seem to come from a far off place. What? Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Okay, okay, I think we got... I think we've got some good ones for... 
Okay, for Toni Morrison. Now let's go to Jamaica Kincaid. Here she is. She is beautiful. Okay. Oh, man. She's got some doozies, y'all. Some doozies. for being with me tonight, y'all. <clears throat> okay, so we've got Jamaica Kincaid. I'm going to try to keep, just roll with it. Jamaica is a Gemini. Nice. Yeah, boy, us air signs now. We do some thinking. Much to sometimes our detriment. Oops. I'm going to try to not look and just um, cut them out and fold. <laughs> Okay, I went a little heavy-handed on Toni Morrison because I am biased, I gotta say. Okay. Shirley Jackson died in 1965. She was an American author. All right. We are on Shirley next. Yeah, The Haunting of Hill House. I've got some works here written down. What is it, Alchemy? Are you coming to say hi to everybody, honey? You're going to come up here and say hello? She just waved at y'all. She stood up, stretched, and waved at the computer. Isn't that cute? You're so precious, honey. Here, are you like this? She loves uh, paper balls. It's her favorite thing. Jamaica, Antigua. She's got some powerful quotes. I don't want to go backwards, man. There's, you know, people... I don't want to go backwards. December 14th. Oh, that's cool. SAG power. But the, she shares a birthday. That's one day, uh, actually one day before my mom's birthday. Hers is the 15th. Okay, and then we have Gertrude Stein. Did anybody pick Gertrude? We're going to read some of hers regardless because she's pretty dang funny. She has a quote that says, If you don't have anything nice to say about somebody, come take a seat next to me. <laughs> cut it off. Fun, fun. Yeah, I've had some besties that were um, Sagittarius. They sure know how to put you in your place when you need it. 
<laughs> they don't mind speaking truth, that's for sure. And, um, yeah, that was really great for this Gertrude because she speaks, she spits some truth now. little paper balls all over the house and <clears throat> I know right it's true it's true all right now the last but not least uh oh oh I'm missing joy oh man did I I must have got her mixed up I'm sure she's in here I'll find her I think I double dipped Okay, we have Virginia Woolf. Man, Virginia Woolf was intense too. She names it, uh, yeah, she, oh, there's Joy. Okay, cool. Good deal, good deal. Okay. I found joy. Yeah, Virginia Woolf. She uh she couldn't carry the pressure anymore. Sweet Virginia. Oh, I can't wait. I think these ladies will help us as we move through the next couple of weeks. Because, y'all, we've got a solar eclipse. So we've got this lunar eclipse now in Libra. We're examining our relationships. For me, it's... Yeah, who, you know, what is my identity, you know, and, and what am I, especially vis-a-vis -vis this, this, this world that says because I'm a woman, I shouldn't be speaking or, and then next week we've got our, or the 8th, April 8th, we've got the sun solar eclipse in Aries. So our relationship with self and others is really under the microscope. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be overwhelming sometimes, but hold on, y'all. You're not alone. We're going through it together. It's a necessary for us to get to the other side. The most important thing is visualize the love, visualize the positivity, even when it's all feeling wrecked inside yourself. Oopsies. Which is really hard to do. But I believe in every single one of y'all. We can do this. Oh, Wolf had child abuse in common. Yeah, I started on the whole. Yeah, it's true. Thanks for sharing with us, Shadow. I think we're all working that stuff out. And one of the things that really hits me um, hard about this time now is I spent my life, my whole life, um, you know, I was in terribly abusive situations as a child carried over into partners that I picked and then I was like screw this I'm never getting in another relationship my whole life and I went 10 or so years without having a partner 
But my whole life, y'all, after I got out of that crap, was dedicated to domestic violence, to um, helping suicidal people, psychotic people, hurt people. I was, am a natural, I can't help it. It is, it is what compels and drives me. Love people, pick people up, help people, hug people, tell them it's going to be okay even when it feels like shit wake up another day you know do you want to die or do you want the pain to go away kind of thing and mostly we want the pain to go away and sometimes it gets so painful we'll do just about anything to make that pain go away so what really kills my heart y'all is here we are in 2024 and there are preachers saying out loud these disgusting and despicable things about women, about black people, about Native Americans. I mean, laws going on the books to start stealing Native American children. Again. You've got to be kidding. How is this real? So if you're falling down, it's okay. We won't let them win. All right. <clears throat> So, let's hear from, let's go up to Gertrude. Did anybody pick Gertrude? Who, who picked who? Let's see, we have um, Jamaica, we have Jamaica Kincaid. Aria has um, Shirley Jackson. Um, Lindsay has Toni Morrison. Nico, who do you want? And Shadow, who do you want? We'll start with um, Jamaica Kincaid. Yeah, I feel you. You can't pick. That's cool. We'll just. Um, it's okay. No worries. Because they're. We'll do. We'll start with uh, Jamaica here. I'm just going to pull random quotes from these beautiful sisters of ours. I feel like they have insight for us to get us through these next couple of weeks. Oh, listen, Jay. Who you are is a mystery. No one can answer, not even you. Jamaica Kincaid, the, autobiogra the autobiography... Why am I not being able to say that of my mother? My mother's autobiography. Why am I saying that weird? Autobiography. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Who you are is a mystery. No one can answer. Not even you. That's powerful. And true as we're... Seeking our identities right now. I tell you one thing though At this particular time what's really exciting is we get to build our identities Truly With who we want to be with our own dreams and never mind with these naysayers these sickos these maniacs, this is the opportunity to completely deconstruct ourselves, to completely pull away from these toxic paradigms that we keep buying into, we keep explaining ourselves. Okay, I shall do that. I'm going to do Nico, I'm going to give you Gertrude, and Shadow, I'm going to give you Joy Harjo. Mmm. Yeah, for some reason I want joy, and then we'll all listen to Virginia Woolf. Because, you know, we are really being put under the boot of these weirdo uh, Christian evangelical fascists. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> I said it. Why shouldn't I say it? It's freaking me out. I can't even believe we're going here. All right, let's do another one from... Ooh, we got to go. Oh, this is so good. Okay, this is Jamaica Kincaid from Annie John. My unhappiness was something deep inside me. 
And when I closed my eyes, I could even see it. It sat somewhere, maybe in my belly, maybe in my heart. I could not exactly tell, and it took the shape of a small black ball, all wrapped up in cobwebs. I would look at it and look at it until I burned the cobwebs away. And then I would see that the ball was no bigger than a thimble, even though it weighed worlds. At that moment, just when I saw its size and felt its weight, I was beyond feeling sorry for myself, which is to say I was beyond tears. I could only just sit and look at myself feeling like the oldest person who had ever lived and who had not learned a single thing. Oof! Gut punch! I think it's important, especially now during these eclipses, to seize these moments where the universe is aligning for us to name it. Name that black little ball that's the size of a thimble but weighs so much to name it, to look at it, to see it, even though it really hurts. Because that's the one and only way we clear those cobwebs is by going straight through it. And look, we're lucky because we are not alone in doing this anymore. That's the difference. That's the difference between now and the time these beautiful women were alive and telling their story, is we are connected all around the world. Right now, Aria's in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, visitors from across the pond. We are a collective voice all around the world, sharing each other's experiences and identifying the little black balls, identifying the um, cobwebs. And for the first time in history, we don't have to do that alone. And for the first time in history, because it is such a shared experience, the lies won't win. They can't win because everybody sees the truth. Everybody is having the same experience. And so this is the first time in history where the collective is collectively coming together to chit chat. That is so powerful. Let's do one more. How are you doing, Jay? This feels like it's, it's punching some, some, uh, Well, this feels like I want to do this one. How you doing, Jay? This is some heavy stuff, honey. Let's check in. I'm sending you big hugs. We're all sending you big hugs, and everyone's gonna have a turn at their <laughs> the wheel. I'm gonna wait just a sec for Jay, cause um. How's everybody doing here in that? Y'all let me know. Mixed experience. Yeah, that's good, honey. That's good. And it, these are, they're shocking in their truth, right? Um, but this is the, this is the thing about healing. I feel it's incredibly important because, you know, why am I so lonely? Why am I so dissatisfied? These are things I think and feel, and I know that I'm not alone in doing so. And then along comes someone like Jamaica Kincaid or Toni Morrison or Shirley Jackson who can just identify that for us. And it's incredibly important in our healing to identify where that loneliness is or where that anger is or where you know and, and just pull those threads once and for all because i believe that when we cut these cords and strings our puppet masters these maniacs that are steering us right over a cliff they have less and less and less power over your personal autonomy but the cobwebs must be clean because they rely on those cobwebs in the stinky corners of our darkest room. That's where they keep us in control and shame and whatnot. So hold on to your, are you ready for one more or you want to wait, Jay? Because we can go on to, um, and then we'll come back to it so that you can just kind of marinate and think.
We are in no hurry. Okay, ready. <clears throat> Whoops, let me pull this up here. I cannot tell you how angry it makes me to hear people from North America tell me how much they love England, how beautiful England is with its traditions. All they see is some frumpy, wrinkled up person passing by in a carriage waving at a crowd. But what I see is the millions of people of whom I am just one made orphans, no motherland, no fatherland, no gods, no mounds of earth for holy ground, no excess of love which might lead to things that an excess of love sometimes brings. And worst, and most painful of all, no tongue. This one hit me powerfully hard. I think of Jamaica Kincaid, all the people who were enslaved, the Native Americans, everyone who was conquered and destroyed. And to cry out in a language that isn't even your own language, she really hit this home in my heart. What an experience it must be to have been conquered and taken over. And now you can't even cry to your mother in your mother's tongue anymore. It's completely... She rocked my world with this... Um with this statement, and I've been mulling it over now for, for a little while. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Let me know. What are your thoughts? So let me know, y'all. What are your thoughts on these? What um, images come to mind? What feelings are you feeling right now as you hear these stories? I'm going to be quiet while I wait. I'm glad. It is good to hear. I feel it's it's incredibly confirming. It makes my thoughts not so crazy because that too is the narrative of the beast. It's a difficult journey. Mhm. Mm All right, let's go to Nika. We're going to pull um, Gertrude Stein. She's a firecracker. She makes me laugh. Oh, here we go. There ain't no answer. There ain't never going to be any answer. There never has been any answer. There's your answer. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. She is fantastic. Oh, this is great. This is great. Okay. The one thing that everybody, and this was written, okay, y'all, I want you, 1943, tincture this. Let this marinate. 1943, this woman wrote these words. The one thing that everybody wants is to be free, not to be managed, threatened, directed, restrained, obliged, fearful, administered. They want none of these things. They all want to feel free. The word discipline and forbidden and investigated and imprisoned brings horror and fear into all hearts. They do not want to be afraid, not more than is necessary in the ordinary business of living where one has to earn one's living and has to fear want and disease and death. 
The only thing that anyone wants now is to be free, to be let alone, to live their life as they can, but not be watched, controlled, and scared. No, no, not. Powerful, powerful. 1943, she wrote this. And we're not more, I mean, I can't speak for all countries, but I can tell you in America, try to get anything done. You are bogged down. <laughs> Liberation, none are free until all. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we are so not free. We are watched. We are administered. We are threatened and coerced every day. From harassing phone calls, threatening, if you don't pay this, you're going to get this taken away. Everything is under threat and coercion. And, and that's not freedom. Let's do... <laughs> oh, this is this one was picked with bias. Coffee is a lot more than just a drink. It's something happening, not as in hip, but like an event, a place to be, but not like a location, but like somewhere within yourself. It gives you time, but not actual hours or minutes, but a chance to be like be yourself and have a second cup. Gertrude Stein, Selected Writings. <laughs> I love her. Okay, we'll do one more and move on. I'm going to save these because I'm going to do little memes with these, you know, and put them on my little, make little shorts out of them. Oh, here's a great one. And let this, let this be a guide, a northern star, if you will. Nothing is really so very frightening when everything is so very dangerous. <laughs> I love her. We got a couple more. Let's go to Shirley Jackson. Aria, we're going to go with Shirley. Mmm. This is powerful. She's, um, this is from the sundial. The sight of one's own heart is degrading. People are not meant to look inward. That's why they've been given bodies to hide their souls. I love this statement. Um, because it's bad mannered, it's not proper to dig into your emotions. For for so many years, there was such a a cultural truth that it's unseemly to cry. It's unseemly to dig into um, the truth of you, who you are, to dig into your soul, to look into your heart. Right? It is cool. Um, but I think that that's required of us now. I mean, the stars and planets are aligning for it now. Revolution is in the air right now. You know, we're all on the precipice of World War III, and we're all feeling it. To ignore it, to put our heads down, to compartmentalize like we've always done. But we're going to have, it's, 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 it's going to be this ongoing gnarliness of, of, of the old way, of that old, primitive drum driving us smaller and smaller and smaller. So I invite y'all to, in this time of chaos and uncertainty, of constant threat, of constant coercion, of constant fear, of constant regulations, when you're having emotional breakdowns, when your brain feels like it's going to explode, just remember these words. This is a absolutely normal response. You're not you're 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 not individually sick because there's something inherently wrong with you or individually uh, mentally ill because there's something inherently wrong with you. The world in which we live right now is incredibly ill, is incredibly sick. So so when we go down those rabbit holes of self-annihilation or sabotage, remember this. Remember that 
You don't have to hold the burden like there's something wrong with you. We live in an incredibly toxic and sick society and we're figuring out a new way and no one has any answers and if they say they do, run. Just get out of there. Disengage. Go away. Because <laughs> they don't. All right. Everything that makes the world like it is now will be gone. We'll have new rules and new ways of living. Look at that confirmation. Maybe there will be a law not to live in houses. So then no one can hide from anyone else, you see? Shirley Jackson, The Lottery, and other stories. She's got some profound little short stories to make you quiver and think. Do one more. Oh. <clears throat> this is from The Haunting of House Hill. I think we are only afraid of ourselves, the doctor said slowly. No, Luke said of seeing ourselves clearly and without disguise. Shirley Jackson, The Haunting on House Hill. I like this. Um, we're afraid of seeing ourselves. And then Luke says, no, we're afraid of seeing ourselves clearly and without disguise. I feel it's because we've been so conditioned in those disguises that authenticity and vulnerability become almost criminal and so or at least taboo criminal tab taboo um unseemly all those impolite impolitic but then we end up going round and round and round on a merry-go-round designed by a bunch of maniacs um so with all this fear and coercion, I feel like that's why this moment in time right now is so incredibly uncomfortable and it's so incredibly uncomfortable to dig deep within our hearts and souls of, of who we are and what we want. Seeing ourselves clearly without disguise. Like, who the hell am I? I don't even know been disguised for so long yeah the masks are driving us all and saying yeah we're ready i like that one the best i think it's appropriate for all of us yeah we've been taught to wear these masks and we've been taught to like we've been convinced that those masks are our real faces but they're not they're faces that we put upon us in order to meet the faces that we meet there. And, and so digging into our own authenticity and who we are and what we want without all the masks uh, is a reason why I'm really glad that we all get together our every two weeks. You know, I'm glad that we get together and touch base and, and talk and reflect. Okay. we got a couple more. We'll save those. Shadow, hmm, I'm gonna pick a joy. Oh, look, oh, Shadow, look, and everybody. I release you, my beautiful and terrible fear. I release you. You were my beloved and hate twin, but now I don't know you as myself. Wow. I'm going to read that again. Chills. I release you, my beautiful and terrible fear. I release you. You were my beloved and hate twin. But now, I don't know you as myself. 
That's a terrifying place to be when you start releasing hate and fear. Because then what? Hate and fear are what we've built all our castles and kingdoms upon. Who and what are we when we dissolve this beloved hate twin of fear and loathing? Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm with you there. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, listen. I could hear my abandoned dreams making a racket in my soul. Joe Harjo, crazy brave. I could hear my abandoned dreams making a racket in my soul. And it's almost like the feeling or the, the sound of our abandoned dreams, it's racket is what's starting to break away those masks. It's starting to chisel away at the cities we've built on hate and fear, the selves we've built in response to fear and hate. The dreams we abandon for someone else or for this or for that or, or for fear. And then they start to make racket within our bodies. It's so beautiful. I love her. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, all right, y'all. Take a sip of water, big, deep breath. I accidentally hacked it up, but <clears throat> she's beautiful. Call your spirit back. It may be caught in corners and creases of shame, judgment, and human abuse. You must call in a way that your spirit will want to return. And that's what it's all for, right? That's why we deconstruct this fear and this hate and identify ourselves without the masks, with our authenticity. Um, because then our spirit wants to come home to us. Our spirit is safe to be nestled within ourselves. And that's what it's all for. We're ascending. We're putting down these alleys. Boy, that's some powerful, beautiful stuff. Oh, listen to this, Shadow. I was born with eyes that can never close. I was born with eyes that can never close. And I feel too part of, for me, that hits home because I can't not look. I can't close my eyes and squint them shut and stick my hand over my ears and say la 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 to the present moment, to the anguish playing out in so many places with so many people. Um, and I think that we're all together on this. And I'm holding y'all's hand. All right, let's look at Toni Morrison. Is everybody here? Oh, this is beautiful. I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, remember, your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then it's your job to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. And, th and that's it. There it is right there. Oh, wow. A whole thing with eyes in my family, unusual colors, gray rings. My dad came to me after he died. He never wanted to see what was going on. Or, oh, wow. His eyes were bandaged. In my vision, the only part he donated to science. Wow, that is so profound. 
What gorgeous confirmations from your spiritual team, from ancestors. Just wow. Thanks for sharing, Shadow. That's some profound stuff right there. Oh, here we go, y'all. Anger. It's a paralyzing emotion. You can't get anything done. People sort of think that is interesting, passionate, and igniting feeling. I don't think it's any of that. It's helpless. It's absence of control. And I need all of my skills, all of the control, all of my powers. And anger doesn't provide any of that. I have no use for it whatsoever. Toni Morrison. I love her. No, the eclipse season ain't playing. I got chills all over the place. Chills, chills, chills. I love this Toni Morrison. She felt like she was singing my song, man. Um, all those years in emergency response and all those years seeing folks. Seeing what the world and protocols and anger uh, we're such hurt little babies, you know, and I have no use for anger. Just like she says, it's a paralyzing emotion. You can't get anything done. It's not passionate. It's not interesting. It's not an igniting feeling for me. I don't want any of it. <laughs> I just, I just don't. I like how she says, I need all of my skills. I need all of the control. I need all of my powers. And, and when anger comes in, it sort of sucks all your powers into its vacuum. And, and you really are paralyzed in the round and round and round of anger. The back and forth. And then and, and it, inevitably, the anger gets turned inward. So there's the behaviors of self-annihilation or self-sabotage. When all we really want is the pain that we feel to go away. How's everybody doing? Are we all still here? Jay, are you okay out there? I'm sending you love, holding your hand. Aria, sending you love, holding your hand, shadow. Everyone, hugs, hugs, hugs. Nico, Lindsay, are you still with us? Are you hearing your quotes, woman? <laughs> I'll, I'll just hold up for just a sec. You are very, very welcome. Thank you, Jay, for being here. Thank y'all for being here, for sharing. My little puppy is whining somewhere. Where are you, baby? What you want, honey? You gonna get on your happy mummy big bed? Hmm? Your big bed? She got a new bed. She's a little chihuahua renamed um, corn dog. All right, I'm drinking some tea. Trying to, I, I make it, I made myself a giant glass of peach tea. I told myself in this, this time I'm gonna slow down, drink my little peach tea. Hold on, baby, hold on. We're all... <clears throat> Old lady emergency. Tee hee hee. All is well. All is well. Um, that about the eyes. How how precise. I love how just <laughs> poignant and precise. All right. Moving on. Ooh, here y'all go. Here y'all go. You want to fly? You got to give up the shit that weighs you down. Toni Morrison, Song of Solomon. That's such a good book. 
Such a good book. She is a mistress of the language, man. Oh, okay, y'all. I want your feedback on this quote. She was the third beer, not the first one, which the throat receives with almost tearful gratitude nor the second that confirms and extends the pleasure of the first, but the third, the one you drink because it's there, because it can't hurt, and because what difference does it make? Toni Morrison, Song of Solomon. What's your thoughts on that? Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's the one. Okay, Shadow, y'all listen. This is a good one, too. Make up a story. For our sake and yours, forget your name in the street. Tell us what the world has been to you in the dark places and in the light. Don't tell us what to believe, what to fear. Show us belief's wide skirt and the stitch that unravels fear's call. Now, fear's call, I love this because on the one hand, it's fear calling, like fear calls us, it weighs us down. But the word she uses here is C-A-U-L, call. And it is absolute brilliance, y'all, because the, the word means amniotic membrane enclosing a fetus. It also means a woman's close-fitting indoor headdress or hairnet. So, <laughs> it sounds to me it's time to switch to liquor tea, right? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's good. Switch it up. Switch it up. So tell your stories. Don't be afraid to name it, to talk to it. That's kind of what this um this Libra Lunar Eclipse live is um a big hug and a pat on the back because you're you you made it through every day and you're sitting here today and that's a huge congratulations. That's a huge high five and pats on the back that I'm sending out over the airwaves to you. Um, we're reading the stories and the words from these, these sisters of ours who came before us to give us the comfort and the strength to speak our words, to speak our voice, to tell the story of what the world did to you. Like Shadow shared, what is the world doing to you? Um, it's been so discouraged over time. Uh, but I really feel like these shifts into the Aquarian age, the um, assistance and support that the cosmos are bringing us, even though it feels awful to be touching these um, most intimate and raw primal parts of ourselves, the moment requires us to to name it, to go to those dark places and, and to and to really describe what the world what it did to you, how it hurt us. There we go. Cheers everybody. Okay, let's do I wanna pull um a couple of Virginia Wolf. Then we'll just, uh, uh, this, I can't believe, and you know what just absolutely gets my goat, y'all, 
is that, for example, Virginia Woolf, she was a 19th century writer, so she wrote in the 1800s. And if this stuff still isn't relevant now, I can't even believe this. That's that's half of my deal is I can't even believe this. Lock up your libraries if you like, but there is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set upon the freedom of my mind. Woot woot, that's right, Virginia. As long as she thinks of a man, nobody objects to a woman thinking. <laughs> Orlando, Virginia Woolf, Orlando. It's so true. As long as she's thinking it about a man, men don't care if a woman's thinking. Go to Gertrude. Oh, this is great. A very important thing is to not make up your mind that you are any one thing because you are many and you are complex. We are not just one little thing that fits perfectly and, and it's a uh, compatible peg, whether it's uh, the circle or the square or the triangle. We're all of those things and more. Let's see, Toni Morrison. Ooh. Love is never any better than the lover. Wicked people love wickedly. Violent people love violently. Weak people love weakly. Stupid people love stupidly. But the love of a free man is never safe. There is no gift for the beloved. The lover alone possesses his gift of love. The loved one is shorn, neutralized, frozen in the glare of the lover's inward eye. Toni Morrison, the bluest eye. If y'all haven't read Toni, and all of these women, they are bomb diggity. Um, if you would like, I can read their short stories and books and whatnot, and then we can do bibliomancy. Um, like when we do pick a cards, I can choose, just let me know what you think, and I'll choose whomever. She writes short stories, poems, novels, they all do. Um, and I can pick a piece of their work and read you a full story and then do bibliomancy, kind of like we're doing tonight, just bibliomancy using the book and pulling sentences and words that might resonate and, and help along this journey to know that we're accompanied. So let me know what y'all think of that. Would you like to hear their stories um, and do some Bibliomancy and Lewis and pick a card sometimes? What do y'all think? And I'll be right back. I'm going to check the telly and see where the great, uh, I'm going to just check where the storms are real quick. <clears throat> All right, we have one. Yeah, where is that? Where the heck is everybody? This is one of those moments where I'm going to put on like, I'm going to record uh, Pink Floyd because right now is the perfect time for 
Is anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, y'all. That's almost it. I wanted to pull a couple of cards just to... So who, oh, let's consult these little babies. So I wanted to pull a couple of little cards. Okay, what do you think, Aria, about reading stories from these authors and doing some bibliomancy uh, in upcoming readings? You okay out there, Shadow? I'm sending you love, honey. All right, we're going to pull just a little couple of encouraging cards to close. I love these women. I thank them for their voice. Thank them for their guidance. I'm going to put these to the side because I'm going to go check out some stories and... Oh, good. Yep, yeah, it's getting... Um... Storms are getting closer and closer. So we're going to pull a card and uh, say nighty night so we can hunker down. Pay attention. We live in a trailer so we could be like Dorothy flying away. <laughs> oh, it's my show. Yeah, I think we're going to read some stories. I think it's important to uh, honor this these facets of these women, these facets of ourselves. All right, sweet spirit. So I'm encouraging. Lovely, encouraging words from my beautiful soul extensions as we close. Um, words that help them carry through and get through any intensity, any sadness, any injury, any worry. And remind you that you're loved. All right, I'm going to start. Jay, Aria, Shadow. Lindsay, Nico, are you and Feral Kitty still with us, Nico? J. Aria, Lindsay, is that how that went? J. Aria, is that how that went, y'all? Shit. Let me do this one at a time. Let me do this one at a time. I am too uh, caterwonky to remember anything right now. All right. Do over. Do over. All right. With Jay. Let's pull a card for Jay. Oh, look at those beautiful, pretty colors. Look at that. 40. Hey, didn't you just get um eight last time, Jay? This abundance. Because you got master number 44. Oh, I, you know, it might not feel like it, but integration. You are integrating some big stuff. I combine body, mind, and soul to lift all of humanity into a new dimension. Wow, look at the work you're doing. Not only, see, and here's the thing, Jay. Yes, you're worth it, absolutely, because the healing you're doing for you is also healing me and Shadow and everyone in the world. You are integrating some profound things. This, um, let me go back to her. Uh, 
There was a couple of, oh, here we go. That angry and that sadness that she was talking about, that naming of a sadness. That one the where it was um, seeing it for the first time, this little ball, this little black ball the size of a thimble in, in this darkened corner of a room filled with cobwebs. You're in the process of cleaning those cobwebs, of identifying the little black ball, of seeing um, what it is. And yes, it's uncomfortable. And yes, it's shattering. But the integration that comes from the work you're doing now, and you got another confirmation with that eight. So whatever you've been doing these last couple of weeks is bringing in this integration. Oh, I just love that. Okay, shadow. Chiron's healer, wounded healer, healer, heal thyself. Yep. And, and you really are doing that, bringing in your own abundance, abundance of heart, abundance of mind, abundance of soul. Because when you, and, and as you do those things, you're really raising not only yourself, but the collective consciousness and integrating these things and attracting the prosperity and abundance and fulfillment. It's not something you have to go out and look for. You are enough. All right, Shadow. Sweet spiritual team of Shadow Scribe. Let's bring something to remember when the all falls down or stumbles or uncertainty, doubt, fear. What helps our sweet deer through all that? Oh, look at there. Celebrate life. I celebrate every day by honoring and respecting all life on Mother Earth. Ooh, look at you. Um, you know what came to mind? Skinwalker, Shadow Walker, Shapeshifter. That might be an ancestry, some gifts that you have as a shapeshifter. I love this totem, these beautiful, powerful animals that you have working with you, both in the spirit realm and here. So if you um, are going through your day feeling the doom and gloom and animals happen by you, birds, hummingbirds, insects even, Look up their spiritual meaning. They are guides helping you through, um, helping you Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Untie, uh, cut those knots that bind you and, rem and, and they're reminders, they're everyday reminders of your grace, of your power, of your courage and your bravery. And little beautiful reminders of celebrating life. Hey, oh, it's so sweet. Aria, Aria, sweet Aria Grace. Sweet, beautiful, awesome spiritual team of Aria. What insight, love, validation, encouragement. Would you love to bestow upon our beautiful Aria Grace? Woo, wow, look at this sacral chakra as you're going off to yoga. Look at that lit up. I feel comfortable in my own body. I'm sensitive to the other's feelings. This is something that was, I love this confirmation of energetic alignment, of opening, of becoming alive, it feels like, for the first time in many, many years, to becoming sensitive to other people's feelings, but those feelings don't 
don't burden you. They're not weights anymore or anchors anymore. I love the 10 of the completion of a cycle and this beautiful healing coming on. This is significant and recent news here with this chakra. I love that your spiritual team is saying, let's, um, I know it's scary, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I love your spiritual team here is with you during this chakra energy. I love this orange, this vibrant, your creativity, almost like a wholeness for the first time in a long time. It's quite extraordinary. I'm feeling warm and cold sensations. So your body might be um, heating up and cooling down. There might be these kinds of sensations going on. This is a confirmation of that. All right? It's so beautiful. A lot of bird messages. Nice shadow. Look up those birds and, and, and um, go down that fun little rabbit hole of their dream meaning. Um, go back to the ancient ways of the meanings around the animals. It'll it'll help. It'll help build a firm foundation on which to walk. Lindsay. Oh, look at that! And you did you feel um hot and cold? As I suddenly started feeling hot and cold, like warm, flush, and then uh, chill. <clears throat> Sweet Lindsay, spiritual team. She gets um, bogged down, worried, feeling defeated, anxious, restless. What? Uh, wow. Cool. I love you, Source. Um, what happy glimmer can she reflect upon to put her back to good? Oh, look at there. Another eight, the healer. I am loving and compassionate and able to bring healing to others. I love this bear. You're protected. Is that a bear? Or some kind of... It looks like it's almost a mix, like a bear and a wolverine. I love this crystal she has as your charge in crystals. This is a beautiful confirmation and sign that your spiritual team is with you in the present moment on this earth as you're going about and doing. I love her beautiful headdress. So remember who you are, sister. And also, this being said, there's a lot of healing going on within you and your emotional body so that you remember who you are, so that you are less likely to compromise or negotiate your worth because you're worthy of this healing. Beautiful, beautiful. Nico, are you still here? Whether she's here or not, we'll um, pull a card for her. For sweet Nico, spiritual team. Because she'll get it. <laughs> she'll get it. How are you? Let's see. Okay, sweet Nico. Giving her guidance, assistance, a warm hug when she needs it. Sending it out into the spiritual realms. Loving guidance, encouragement for Nico. <gasps> Look how pretty. Oh, it's so appropriate. Like, you know, she's not here. So we're sending this spiritually through our third eye to hers. I see the wisdom of my higher self and apply this wisdom of my life. Beautiful purples. Did I miss anybody? I think we got everybody. And with that, thanks for playing. I shall see y'all. Oh, hey, I'm going to probably do some impromptu lives because I really want to be out in the garden with y'all. 
So we might be looking at another live in the next couple of days. Um, and then definitely I'm going to try, we're going to do again in two weeks for our new moon. And I'll, I'll continue to try to do it outside. Uh, and with that, thank you all for being here. Y'all are special. And I, I really, really can't express enough how much y'all mean to me for my own learning and growing and uh, cleaning out my own cobwebs. And I shall see. Happy cleaning cobwebs, everybody. Jay, remember you're not alone. We're holding your hand. Shadow, we're with you holding your hand. Lindsay, hugs and hand holding. Aria, as always. And I shall see y'all later, my loves, my beautiful soul extensions. Bye.